Of course you can. Hey, what's your... You led us on a merry chase, Aerith. Shitload of bullets. Hey! What the hell? Nice catch. You're crazy. Just like you. So suck it up, because I'm not leaving. Damn it! You want to explain yourself, partner? Where's Eric? I sent him to Seven Heaven to get Marlena. So we're sending back up the pillar now that we've seen what happened to Aerith after she split up from Tifa and Cloud. And it seems as though Shinra, well, I guess they did it in the original game also, makes perfect sense, that they're going to pin the destruction of the plate in Sector 7 on Avalanche. Now, I would say that the population of Midgar is already primed to believe that Avalanche would be doing anything, that they're capable of anything, because they've already destroyed two of the Mako reactors, and... Well, there was a lot of collateral damage, especially with the first one. After that first one exploded, we spent some time running back to Sector 7, and, well, the damage was significant. And I guess maybe... Maybe, uh, there is a difference between destroying the plate and blowing up a reactor. But in both cases, there's going to be a lot of collateral damage, and I do wonder if there is really that big of a difference between the tactics of Avalanche and the tactics of Shinra. I guess maybe the difference would be that Avalanche is, or rather that Shinra is doing everything they're doing based on greed as opposed to any sort of uh, greater meaning. Avalanche is at least trying to stop Shinra from destroying the planet and Shinra is the one doing it. But on the other hand, if you look at a lot of the individual members of Avalanche, they're all really sort of tied up with their own personal reasons for joining Avalanche. And usually it's based on some type of personal sense of revenge that they want to get, as opposed to, I guess, any true sort of environmentalist or altruistic concerns. So you look at, well, um, Cloud is doing it, or Cloud is a part of this just for the money. And I guess there's a connection to Tifa that he wants to stick around with her. Tifa, on the other hand, is here because her hometown was destroyed and she blamed that on Shinra, even if it was actually Sephiroth's fault. I guess she has a hard time seeing a difference between Sephiroth and Shinra. But she wants revenge on Shinra. Same thing with Barrett. Barrett's hometown was destroyed actually by Shinra. I guess, you know what, maybe there might have been some extended universe um, story in the Final Fantasy 7. Like, uh, what did what they call it? The compendium or whatever? Which might have blamed the explosion of the reactor on somebody else. But Shinra definitely burned his village down. So he has a personal personal grudge. Same thing with Jesse. Her father was put into a coma, so she has a personal grudge. And Okay, so you have a lot of characters, not necessarily motivated by greed, but definitely motivated by personal concerns. What was that? Huh? 
how'd you guys rate my latest and greatest design? Eleven out of ten? Today's your unlucky day, cause I never miss. That's some serious shit if you can take down a helicopter with a hand grenade. But, you know, it is a ridiculous video game, so... <laughs> I'll believe a lot of things if you... serve it up to me like that. Jesse, well, Cloud's motivation is really no different than it was in the original game, and same thing with Tifa and Barrett's for joining Avalanche is really no different than it was in the original game. Those characters didn't really need much in the way of fleshing out to give them motivation. Jesse and the other members of Avalanche did, and all of Jesse's sort of reasons for joining Avalanche are definitely a product of this game as opposed to the original. Although, I would say that even having gone through the game at this point, I still don't understand the motivations of Biggs and Wedge. Wedge especially. Biggs has a certain personality to him and he, and he uh, volunteers at the Orphans at the orphanage, and I guess a lot of those are war orphans, and you could potentially blame the uh, death of their parents on Shinra, which ran the military. That they're war orphans, I'm pretty sure. So I guess maybe he he has some connection with that, and that might be one of the reasons why he joined Avalanche. Wedge, though, I don't know what the story with him is. I mean, he doesn't really get much of a backstory here. And he's, his character seems to be more based around, oh, he's the fat guy. And that seems to be what his character is. <laughs> Some of these enemies are annoyingly damaged sponges. I guess maybe I should have taken the turrets out first. Let's speed this one up. I don't want this episode to be too long. It was already going to be 37 minutes. So I'm going to have to speed some of these sections up at least a little bit. The boss battle I'll definitely speed up. These uh, playthroughs aren't really intended to be a guide for anybody. Especially since I played through it not really knowing how to get through it anyway. This is a, a um, blind playthrough even if the commentary is being provided after the fact. Jesse! They're your last. It's okay, Cloud. It's okay. They were my bombs. They were all my victims. I had it coming. My hero was so gentle. Just try to hang on. You owe me a pizza. <laughs> That's right. I do. But I 
don't think. Oh no. Dave is crying. Did I say something wrong? You never really got much interaction between characters like Tifa and the other members of Avalanche. She was present there and they referenced her in conversation, but she wasn't really... I don't recall there being any kind of dialogue scenes between those characters. So, I guess it makes a little bit more sense in this one. I, Barrett was the one that it made perfect sense that he has a freak out after seeing them die. And Tifa, I guess, in this game, they added enough to make it make sense. Although I still feel like there wasn't a lot of interaction between, like, Jesse and Tifa. But I guess there really doesn't have to be. <laughs> uh, oh. I ain't done with you yet! You hear me? Still alive and kicking? Damn right. Leading man sticks around to the credit roll. Though we gotta keep moving if we wanna make it that far. You ready? Yep. Personal, bitch. Miss me. Your next asshole. Sorry, losers. Gotta play for keeps today. No time to dick around. Plate separation authorized. Awaiting confirmation. Plate separation authorized. Awaiting confirmation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming right up. Yeah. You know you don't. Not when I'm working. <laughs> Plate separation authorized. Awaiting confirmation. Press it. Now, now. You ain't got shit on us. <laughs> Alright, so we have the battle with Reno at the top of the pillar. Reno was one of the... One of the more memorable boss fights in the original game, I think mostly because he had certain abilities that allowed him to... Uh, what was it called? The Pyramid spell that he would cast on a character, and you could remove it, but you had to go and attack the character or attack the pyramid or something like that. So it added a little bit of 
strategy to that fight. And honestly, there's not a whole hell of a lot of strategy you have to employ in the original Final Fantasy VII. Because it's a fairly simple game as far as the battles go. All of the uh, tougher gameplay parts of it are based more around the materia system and knowing how to maximize it in order to make your characters more powerful because you've had certain characters that will <laughs> stubborn shit birds, ain't you? Prepping for a bombing run. How come? Say what? I see you're doing whatever the hell you want. <laughs> Guess I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Heads up, guys. Of course, Rude wasn't present in the original uh, in the original game during this section. Oh, there's the pyramid. You got to do the same thing. <laughs> they do a little bit to give the impression that Reno and Rude are as tough as they're supposed to be. And you don't really get that much of an impression of that in the original game. I mean, every time they show up, you just kick the shit out of them. But they're doing a little bit more to especially make Reno here, as fast as he is, come across as tougher than he did in the original game. away from. <laughs> Come on, let's teach him the first two steps. Now Ruth has joined the fight. And, well, they, as I said before, they didn't have Rude in this section of the game. Rude didn't even appear at all as far as I can remember until we were in the uh, Shinra Tower. He's the one that captures you as you try to escape. As you try to escape right after rescuing Aerith, not as you actually do escape. I'm a little bit torn on how I feel about that, because on one hand, it does make sense that you're going to want to introduce this character earlier on, because for the same reason you wanted to introduce Sephiroth earlier on than was in the original game, because if you didn't, he'd barely be in this game. And you're going to introduce this character, like, way late into the game, and then he's barely around, and he's supposed to, and he's got this personality that makes him a good character, and you want to kind of maximize his presence in this game. On the other hand, having him appear later on in the game, when he's supposed to, gives the player and the fans something to wait for. Something to have happen later on, that you experience towards the end of the game, as opposed to being something that just sort of gets thrown in where it doesn't necessarily belong. Plate separation authorized. Awaiting confirmation. How do we stop it? <laughs> Who knows? Where are you going? Move! Get real tired of your shit! Keep up! Where'd you? Plate separation initiated. Plate separation initiated. Commencing separation sequence. Section 1 separation imminent. Evacuate immediately. Plate separation initiated. You son of a bitch! What have you done?! <laughs>
What do we do? <sighs> nothing. There is nothing you can do now. You can't do this! Eva! I found Marlene! Eric! Marlene? My Marlene? What did you do with her? Where are you? I'm at the... Sir, <laughs> Your activities unwittingly brought you into contact with the Ancient, who is now back in our custody where she belongs. For this, you have my sincere gratitude. Alas, the sector in which you stand has been condemned. Ancient? Run! You have to go now! And where exactly do you expect them to go? <sighs> Aerith! Get my ship enemies. Evacuate the area immediately. Aerith, run! We don't get the hell out of here right now, we, we gotta think of something. Yeah. Think that is thing. Hey! Over here! Found us a way out! Keep up.